Hey, welcome to this texturing mini series for the rookies. My name is Pablo Munoz Gomez, and I'm gonna show you some really cool and practical tips so that you can texture your character matte inside Substance 3D Painter. They're a lot of fun, and we're gonna keep things very, very simple. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so in this first video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your project in Substance 3D Painter, which is the application that I have open right now. And it is actually really simple. We're gonna keep things very practical. We're also gonna build our first base material, and I'm gonna walk you through some of the reference that I like to collect when I start a new project. So the first thing I need to do is take my FBX file and just drag and drop it inside the viewport like so. And then we're going to get this pop-up window. I'm going to keep everything as default. Fortunately, this mesh already comes with UV maps, so I don't have to auto unwrap it or anything like that. The only thing that I want to check is this import cameras, just in case I want to render, uh, you know, the final image within a Substance 3D Painter, which is totally possible. So I'm going to make sure that I leave this one on. The rest is totally the same. I haven't changed anything. Let's go ahead and click OK. And there we go. So now we have our character in here. I'm going to hold the Alt key and right click to zoom in and out the Alt key and the middle mouse button to pan around. And then I can hold the Alt key and the left mouse button to move things around. So that's how you can manipulate uh, your object in the 3D space. Now you'll notice that if I get closer, the edges look a little bit jagged, like a bit pixelated. That is because of the anti-alias. So this is the first thing that I like to do for any project because I, um, I find this a little bit irritating. So I just try to fix this straight away. And it is something that is very easy to do. Um, you can go ahead and click on this icon right here that shows you the display settings. And you can scroll down a little bit where it says anti-alias. So activate temporal anti-aliasing. So I'm going to click on that. And you see that it fixes that uh, for the most part. You can also play around with the accumulation uh, slider. So the higher number, the, the better it's going to look. But you know it might affect the performance. But anyway, so this is what I wanted to do, just to show you that uh, you can see a better kind of like quality straight away in the viewport. Now, the next thing that I like to do is customize the UI a little bit so that I can work a bit faster. So I use the layers quite a bit. And then each layer will have some settings uh, that I can just scroll if you see here at the bottom right, I'm scrolling to access the settings of that specific layer. So this is something that I use often. Uh, so I prefer just to take these properties of the whatever layer I have selected and just put it on the left-hand side. So let's just click here at the top and move it. Uh, you don't have to do this. This is just my personal uh, preference to work a little bit faster. So I'm going to hover and make sure that I paste this on the side. There we go. So now this one is on the side. And then I can take the texture set as well and just drop it in here. And uh, we can sort of expand this a little bit. Uh, I want to take the texture set settings as well. I want to drop it in here. All right, so basically we have two panels and each panel has two tabs. So in the left hand side, I have the texture settings and I have the properties of the uh, whatever I have selected here. And on the right hand side, I have the texture set list, which is ultimately how many objects are making up this character. So I have the head. If I just turn it off, you see that's just the head, the body and the base. Right, And on the other tab, I have my layers. So for the most part, this is how I like to work. I have a stack of layers. And whenever I select the layer, I have the settings in here. So once I customize the UI, what I like to do is create the mesh maps. So let's go to the texture set settings here. And I'm going to click on Bake Mesh Maps. So these ones are really important because they are the, the 2D images that are ultimately going to drive some of the effects of the generators in 3D Painter. So I'm going to click on Bake Mesh Maps. And this new sort of like interface will pop up. This is just a temporary um, way of previewing this. And I'm going to keep things very simple for this workflow. But just so you know, this is where you can import a high resolution mesh with a lot of details and bake them as well into your low resolution mesh. But again, we're going to keep things very simple. So let's go ahead. And in the output size, I'm going to go and set it to 4K, the same size that I have for my current document. Um, I'm going to check this box right here that says use low poly mesh as high poly because we don't have a, a different mesh. We don't have a high poly mesh to bake from. We're going to kind of like bake it on itself, right? So the low mesh or currently what we have is going to be also our high mesh. So I'm only going to change these two settings and nothing else. And I'm going to click on bake selected textures. And Substance Painter is going to go through the process of baking all the different maps for each one of the objects that make up this character. So normal map, uh, world space normal, ID, I mean occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness. All right. So once it's finished, we can go ahead and click on return to painting mode. And for the most part, you see that not a lot has changed, but you see there's a little bit of a shadow or contact shadow. That is because of the ambient occlusion. And in the mesh maps, now we have a bunch of maps that we can use. Now, just to show you what this actually does, let's go ahead and click on this Add Fill layer just to create a new layer. And I'm going to do another one, actually. So let's create two. And we can go ahead and delete the first one. That was just a default one. And let's go ahead and click on the second layer. And let's go to the Properties field. 
And because now I have this selected, you see I have all my channels and everything in here. I can go ahead and click on the base color and we're gonna change this to a red color just for the, uh, for the head because that's the texture set that I have selected. And what I'm gonna do is just show you what the mesh maps are actually for, or one of the reasons that we created those mesh maps. I wanna click on the mask right here and click on add black mask to this red layer. And of course, because this is a black mask, it removes the red. Now with this mask selected, let's go ahead and click on the magic one and add a generator. Now this generator is currently empty, so we can go ahead and click here and select something like dirt. And you see that just by doing that with this red color, uh, only these areas that have sort of dirt, uh, by the way, if you hold the shift key and right click, you can just move the light around. This is something that I do constantly. But you can see that we have this red color in some of these areas that are kind of like occluded or in the you know in the shadow areas or, or the shaded areas. So basically with this dirt selected, you see that we can change the dirt level just to increase it or decrease it. We can change the contrast of it. We can also change the triplanar blending, uh, the grunge amount. So very, very easy stuff. You can just play around with these sliders uh, to see what you get. Of course, this is not necessarily what we're going for, but just wanted to show you what these mesh maps are for. Now, something that potentially show you this a little bit better is the ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna uh, delete this current generator and click again and select ambient occlusion. So now this red color is applied in the areas where the ambient occlusion happens. So let's go ahead and invert it by clicking on this global invert and make it true. So you see only where the ambient occlusion has been baked, um, we are having this red color. And of course we can just change the global balance. Uh, that's kind of like using levels in Photoshop if you're familiar with that. All right, so that's kind of like a very basic introduction to Substance 3D Painter. Now we can go ahead and concentrate on building a cool material. So let me go ahead and delete the red color and we can just leave this one as our base. And before I get started with the workflow that we're gonna use for building these materials, I just wanna show you what I usually do with my projects. So I'm gonna bring in Pure Ref, which is a different software that I use to collect references, uh, this window that you can see here. And I'm gonna go into full screen. And basically what I like to do is collect a bunch of references that will help me inform the design or uh, you know the patterns, the colors, the, the different palettes that I'm gonna use in a particular project. So for this project, I wanted to do something inspired by the Day of the Dead in Mexico, uh, because I think it has like, some really cool patterns, uh, really nice sort of like shapes and, and contrast of shapes. Uh, so I just collected all of these references and this is what I call my theme reference. So this is kind of like the theme that I'm going for. So you see, they're very different. Um, some of them are just custom. Some of them are more like illustrations about it. Uh, some are just masks. But you know, this gives me an idea of what to aim for or like roughly where to start. The other type of reference that I collect are the style reference. So these are other images that will help me uh, to keep an eye on the specific style. So when I talk about the style, um, I refer to something slightly different to the theme. Uh, the theme is kind of like that day of the dead in Mexico, but the stylization that I wanna give it is this um, you know, very clean sort of vinyl toy uh, that has these very sharp lines and very defined uh, colors, for example, something like that. So that is the style that I wanna go for, uh, but obviously inspired with this theme. Now, the third thing that I like to collect is the material references. So when I'm working with materials, I like to zoom in really closely to certain things or certain um, you know, images that could provide me a visual reference to build the complexity of the materials. So if you look at something uh, like this one, for example, like this is a, a really nice one, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and push it here on the, on the side so that I, I can isolate it. Um, if you look at it from this distance, for the most part, it just looks like a simple white plastic. But if you get really close to it, you see that there is a bunch of imperfections. Of course, the, the resolution is not great, but there's a bunch of imperfections in this material. You also have this uh, sort of like tiny line in here, which, you know, it is it's something that looks intentional in the design, but could also be used as the, uh, the manufacturing seam when you are putting a couple of pieces together from a different mold. So there's a bunch of tiny things that actually make up the complexity of the material. And that's what we're gonna try to replicate as well. If you take this one, for instance, as well, you know, it is for the most part, just a gray material, but there is a bit of translucency. So it makes it a little bit, uh, you know, more interesting around the edges. Uh, you see there's a bit of uh, light coming through around the edges. So that is the type of really subtle things that make something look really realistic and really interesting. So that's why I collected this set of references uh, to try to emulate this uh, vinyl toy material, or this vinyl uh, plastic material. Now, aside from that, I'm gonna show you the final image that I created for this character which is this one right here. And as you can see, it is infused by that idea of the Day of the Dead in Mexico. 
but it has, I think, a much more stylized uh, patterns and, you know, trying to incorporate the idea of the stylization with the, with the thick outlines and all of that. So this is the final design. And I'm going to show you another thing that I do for the project. So when I create something like this, it's always good to have um, a little sketch or something to aim for and not just like start playing around with it directly within Painter, which you can totally do. But I did a very simple sketch, very, very rough uh, on a piece of paper, like the scan is not great or anything, uh, but it just sort of helps me uh, have an idea of what to aim for. And you see, if I just compare, let's say the final one with this, the ideas and the designs for the most part, like I said, are in there, right? So I just try to replicate the same thing that I have here in my very quick sketch in Substance 3D Painter, even though they're not 100% the same thing, um, it sort of gives me an idea of what to aim for. Now, another really cool thing that I want to show you about this process is that we're going to set up things in a non-destructive workflow. That means that we will be able to very quickly change these colors or these um, you know, patterns and all of that with something completely different, right? So this is exactly the same project, uh, but you see now I have these uh, sort of like pupils here uh, that make it look a little bit more evil, uh, but it has like a bunch of different colors. Same thing with this one. And these are things that are really, really easy to set up once you have your project finished. All right, so to set up the base of the material, we already have this fill layer. So all I'm going to do is click on this base color and I'm going to make it a bit more colorized. So it's right now, it's just a pure white. So I'm just going to push it slightly to the right hand side and maybe make it a bit more towards the yellow tones. So very subtle things. And you'll see that uh, building this type of more complex materials is all about the subtlety. So I think that is fine. And we're going to double click on this and call it base. Now, the next thing I want to do is create a new channel that is not currently available. So in the material, we have color, metal, rough, normal, and height. But we also want to create that effect of translucency. So let's go to the texture set settings. And in the channel section, you see we have the same thing listed in here. We're going to click on this plus button and we're going to go for uh, scattering. So I want to click on scattering. So now this is part of my channels. Let's go back to the properties here. And you see we have the scattering. So I want to click on that one. And that gives me this extra channel. So I can click on this slider and then just push it up and down. Now, this is not doing anything or you won't see anything or any effect until you activate it from the display properties. So let's go to the display properties here and let's scroll down to where you see the activate subsurface scattering. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. So I'm going to click on that one and straight away you see that the the material changed quite a bit. I want to increase the sample count so that it's not as noisy. Uh, you can leave it at 16, but I just like to increase it a bit. Let's go for uh, 32. All right, so that you know removes a little bit of the noisiness. Now we can close this up. And now if I just take this scattering slider, you see how I can change that sort of translucency of the object. So that is really cool. So let's go ahead and set it to maybe 0.3. And don't worry about the body or the base just yet. We will be able to create a smart material and apply it later on. So let's concentrate just on the head. So now that we have that extra channel, let's go ahead and create a new layer. And in this new layer, I'm going to call it um, thickness. And I'm going to turn everything off except the scattering. You can do that by holding the Alt key and clicking on the specific channel you want. And I'm going to increase the scattering a little bit more. In fact, let's go ahead and turn it off for a second and take the base. And I'm going to reduce it slightly. So 0.2. Right, just so that you can see a bigger difference. All right, let's go back to the other one, click on to see it. And I'm going to control the thickness of this layer with a mask. So let's click on this mask. Let's go to black mask. And then from the magic one, let's create a fill. So this little bucket right here. So this is a bucket or a fill layer that is applied to the mask. So now the mask is gray and we can change that obviously by doing that. And you see it is obviously changing the effect. But what we want to do is drive this effect with a specific map. So we're going to use some of the maps that we baked at the beginning. So let's click on grayscale and let's go ahead and type thickness. And you see we have three maps that were baked with thickness. So I'm going to go for the first one because I know this one is the head. I want to click on that. And now you see that we have a little bit more of um, a scattering um, in certain areas. I don't know if it's um, a bit hard to see, but anyway, what I need to do is invert it. So let's go ahead and click on the magic one and we can bring in something like levels. So the levels work in the same way as um, Photoshop, for example. All I want to do is click on this option to invert it. And now we have inverted this effect and we can sort of like, you know, crunch these values a little bit just to, to play around with that, with that mask. If you want to be able to see the mask, you can press the Alt key and click on it on the mask and you'll see it in there. So basically with this setup, all we've done is create a layer that controls the thickness, have a mask for it, and then we have these levels that allows you to sort of like change that mask. And whatever the, the white area is, that's where the effect is going to be more prominent. So I'm gonna 
I want to exaggerate things a tiny bit here. All right, and let's go back to the layer and we can play around with the amount of scattering. All right, so the next thing I like to do is to variate the surface a little bit. So let's bring in another fill layer. This time I'm going to choose a slightly darker color, maybe a tiny bit more green than before. So something like that, something darker. And I don't want to affect any of these channels, not the scattering, not the metal, nothing like that, just the color. So I'm going to press the Alt key and click on color. And that way I'm only affecting the color. Now for this, I'm going to repeat the process. And you see, this is something that uh, once you do it a few times, it becomes almost like second nature. So I'm going to click on this icon, create a new black mask, go to the magic one and create a fill. Now for this fill or this mask, I'm not going to use a mesh map. I'm actually going to use something from the library, which is what I have in here. So let's go to this icon where we can search for specific um, you know, textures or black and white images. And you might have different things from what you can see here because I have you know, imported my own references. So let's go ahead and type something like clouds. There we go. So this one's come with Substance 3D Painter. I'm going to click on uh, clouds 3 and I'm going to drop it in there. All right. Now I'm also going to change the projection from UV mapping to triplanar. And that brings this box and this manipulator, which you can also bring here from the top. So you can rotate, scale, or move this around. So this is a lot easier to sort of like, you know, place this uh, the way that you want it to. Uh, you can also scale it up. Uh, but I think this works fine. Now these clouds also come with its own balance and contrast. So you can just balance the amount of these clouds and you can also add a bit of contrast. So this is perfect. All right, so this is pretty much the same thing that we did before. It's just that it has a different sort of mask. Um, the next thing that I want to introduce in this workflow is the blending modes. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to go to this drop down here and I'm going to blend it down. So I'm going to use something maybe like a linear dodge, for example, that could be a good one. And you see it's sort of like brightening things up quite a bit. But you see there is a variation on the color. So now that we have set the mask and we have set the blending mode, we can come back to the color and we can play around with that. So I think I'm going to stick with a sort of like darker green. I think that works fine. And if you don't like this blending mode, you can just use something else. So we can go for one of these blending modes that is going to darken up the, the pixels, let's say, or the colors below it. So maybe multiply. And we can just go back to the color and just reduce it. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit more dirtier than, than before, but again, it's very, very subtle. Now let's go ahead and enhance this even more with another layer. And again, I'm gonna hold the Alt key and press the color just to affect just the color. And I'm gonna go for a, a very bright color just so that you can see the difference. And I tend to do this quite a bit so that I can understand what I'm doing or at least see uh, really what I'm doing with the, with the mask. And let's bring in another black mask. And let's bring in a generator. So I'm going to use the one that I showed you before, which is the third one. I'm going to click on that one. And now we have this third generator. And I'm going to play around with the contrast. Again, there's no right or wrong here. Just you know, play around with these sliders, see what works for you, what, um, what, it, what gives you the result that you want. Uh, so I think I'm going to increase the grunge scale, or reduce it, actually, just to make this, uh, this sort of like details a bit larger. And play around with the amount, like so. And now I can go ahead and set this blending mode to something like overlay, right? And of course, let's select the color itself and we can just push it back to something more realistic. All right, so now this is creating a very interesting pattern. But you see, it's almost like a marvel. Uh, there's no variation in terms of the roughness. This highlight is kind of like telling me that. So now that I have set up this very basic material, what I can do is go back to, let's say, the clouds. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and name them. And you can name this differently, whatever you want. Um, it just clouds reminds me of the, the mask that I use. So in this one, what I'll do is I'm going to enable the roughness as well. So when I enable roughness, I now have this slider and I can go ahead and play around with this independently. So this is basically changing the roughness just in the areas where these uh, clouds are. So that's going to be really fun. So let's go ahead and do something subtle. It's not going to be a massive difference. And let's do the same thing with dirt. Let's go ahead and enable roughness. And that way, just in the areas that have some dirt, uh, let's get closer here. We can go ahead and play with the roughness. So you see how the, the highlight is changing. So we're making these areas a lot rougher or you know, a, more, a more reflective surface. So I'm going to push it back a bit. And that is starting to create something that looks a lot more complex, right? Maybe that was a little bit too much. Again, try to maintain uh, all of these changes uh, should be very, very subtle. All right, let's add a couple more just to wrap it up. Let's click on this fill layer. And this time again, holding the Alt key, let's click on color. Let's find a very bright color. It could be anything that you want. Um, and this time I'm going to use another black mask and another fill layer. 
and I'm going to search for a different uh, map or a different black and white image. Let's call it uh, veins, maybe. Yeah, so uh, this grunge marble veins or this one either or would work just fine. I'm going to drop it in here. And you see it creates these nice marble veins, right? Again, we can just play around with the balance just to increase or reduce the amount of these veins. I'm going to reduce it by pushing the balance up. And also the contrast is fine. And we can also change the projection from UV to triplanar. So that way, again, you can use this uh, really cool manipulator box to uh, place these, uh, these details. And we can also uh, scale it up. And you can also rotate it if you find something like a, a nicer pattern. All right, so I think I'm happy with this. Let's go back to the layer here. And we're going to set this one maybe to a linear dodge. So let's set it to linear dodge. So it's making everything a lot brighter. And you see, I actually want to keep the details, not the other way around. So we can go ahead and invert this effect or invert the mask by clicking on the mask and do what I did before. So clicking on the magic one, go to the levels and click on invert. And that way we also have levels to control the sharpness of this mask as well. All right. So now we have this sort of like almost glowing red. That's not what I want. Let's click on the red color and let's click on the, the swatch and we can just sort of like reduce that uh, maybe to a darker gray towards the yellow tones or green tones. Again, very subtle things. All I want to do is add variation and add complexity um, just by stacking all these different effects. All right, so I think that works fine. If I turn it on and off, you see it makes a slight big difference, really. Um, and we can also select this, bring back the roughness, and just repeat the process that we did before and play around with the roughness of these details alone. Now, I'm going to create another layer to kind of like fake the, uh, the thickness a little bit more or just to enhance the, the effect of the thickness that we have or the scattering. And for that, let's go ahead and press the uh, Alt key on the color just to isolate it. Again, very bright color just to see what we're doing. Click on the black mask, and then we're going to bring in a generator. Now for the generator, I'm going to click on curvature. So this one is going to look at the curvature map and you see it is applying this layer just in the areas where uh, there's kind of like sharp edges. And again, we can go ahead and play around with that, change the balance. So I think I'm going to keep it simple like so, um, maybe a little bit less than that. All right. And this is what I want to use to enhance the sort of like the translucency of these edges. So let me just show you what I'm looking at in my reference so that you know what I'm doing. Uh, so this one's right here. So you see that the material is the same for the most part, but you have these uh, slightly brighter and lighter areas in the edges of this material. And that's all around here in the, in the chin of this character. Right. So that is basically what I'm going to try to achieve. So let's go ahead and set the color first. Um, so another way that I want to show you is that you don't have to click on the swatch. You can click on this eyedropper and then you can choose a color from this mesh. Now, if you just click anywhere, it's going to sample everything that um, that the eyedropper is currently seeing. That means the, the roughness or at least the, the color is going to be affected by the roughness, the metal, whatever map you have. So if you want the pure color with nothing else, you can press the shift key and you see it is just sampling the specific color. So I'm going to click on that one. And that's it. It's just a lighter, um, just a, a white color. But I'm going to make it a bit more vibrant and yellowish, like so. All right. And of course, this might be a little bit too much. So you can play with the blending modes, or you can use this slider. So this is the next thing that I want to show you in the workflow. I'm going to click on the opacity and reduce it, like so. All right. And of course, I want to have a, a bit more translucency in these areas. So I'm going to enable scattering. Right. And I'm going to push the scattering up a bit. So again, I'm having a lot more scattering just in these edges. So I'm having, let's say, 0.5 compared to the other layers. Now, the final layer that we're going to use to wrap up this base material is going to be something that uh, we're going to use quite a bit in the following lessons, uh, which is using the hide map. So let's create a new layer. And again, just Alt, click on color. Uh, you see that I I'm going to keep doing this uh, often because it is the easier way to, uh, to visualize the details or visualize what you're doing. So let's go for, it, it doesn't really have to be the, the red one. You can go for anything uh, as long as you can see it. All right, so this layer, again, I'm going to bring in a black mask. And let's go ahead and click on the magic one. Let's do a fill layer. And let's find something like some dots or grain. Maybe these crunch pebbles should be okay. Yeah, let's try this one. So I'm going to drag and drop this one in here, right? Um, it might be a little bit too big. We'll see how we go. Uh, let's change this to triplanar as well. And we can use the tiling effect here uh, just to tile it. And this actually is looking not too bad. So I think we can go with this one. We can play with the balance as well just to add a few more of these, uh, a bit more contrast. 
And again, you can use the manipulators here just to scale it up, position it a little bit better, maybe rotate things around. So basically what I want to do with this layer is to add a little bit of the sort of plastic imperfection all around. Um, not with color or anything else, but with actual uh, depth or with actual height. So what I can do is, let's go closer here, just so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to click on the layer here, and I'm going to turn off color, so there's no effect right now. And then I'm going to click on hide. Now, if I enable hide, you have another slider, and I'm going to push this slightly so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so now if I move the light around, you see these are just kind of like imperfections of the plastic, which is really, really, really cool. All right, so this is exactly what I wanted. Let's go ahead and also enable roughness, and we can make these areas uh, maybe, oops, let's go ahead and go back. I chose the wrong one. So let's type 0 0.015. So very subtle stuff. Um, I wouldn't go with like really high values in here. And now let's take the roughness and just push it forward a bit more. All right, so I think I like this one, but you might find that the textures that you have here are not exactly what you want. Uh, maybe you want this to be a bit more subtle, a bit more, uh, let's say, blurred, not as, as sharp in terms of these spots that you see here. So that's what you can go ahead and continue building complexity within the mask. So let's go ahead and select the mask here. Click on this drop down of the magic one, and I'm going to use a filter. So I'm going to click on filter. And again, it's an empty filter, so I'm going to click on filter here, and I'm going to go for blur. So this filter is obviously just blurring the effect. I want to enter into the mask so that you can see what I'm doing by holding the Alt key and click. And let's go ahead and reduce the intensity of the blur. So this is without the blur, and this is with a slight bit of blur. So I think this one works a bit better. Let's go ahead and go back. And you see we still have that sort of imperfection happening. So that is about it. That's what's going to create um, sort of like a nice looking base vinyl uh, for the for the toy and then we're going to start building a much more interesting set of detail by just like painting the patterns and you know turning this character into something that that looks a lot better so the final thing that we can do is just copy and paste this material into the other ones so we're going to create a smart material so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to hold the shift key click at the top and then at the bottom and by the way, you can just name all of these one. It would be a little bit better um, to, to visualize them. I want to hold Control and G to create a group uh, so that we have this group. And I'm going to call this material Mad Base. And we can go ahead and right click and go here at the bottom where it says Create Smart Material. So that is going to create a smart material here in your library. As you can see, it has the name and everything. Um, this is the second icon that you see here. And then you can go ahead and drag and drop it into the other ones. And it should. Uh, create a very similar, if not the same effect as the head, right? So now the entire character is wrapped with this vinyl. Now, if I go ahead and select the body, for example, let's go ahead and click on body here from the texture set list. And let's go to the thickness, right? If you remember, this was the second one that we created, the second layer that we created. And let's click on thickness. Um, and let's click on fill you see that the map has been updated. So this is where we chose the, the thickness map for the head. But 3D Painter is intelligent enough uh, to know that we actually want to use the, the mesh maps that we bake for other pieces. So it is using the, the actual thickness map for the body. The same thing for the base. If I go to the base and do the same thing, let's go click on the mask here, click on fill, and we have the thickness for the base. So everything is working really nice um, for our base material. And we have sort of established the non-destructive workflow, meaning that everything that we have here can change completely. So for example, if I select the base, I can go to the color and then change the base completely. And again, we have all the nice uh, sort of like details that we established. And of course, you can go ahead and uh, continue editing this material to, to adjust it. So let's go ahead and undo that. So I'm going to leave this lesson here. And in the next one, we're going to start having a little bit more fun with the patterns and the designs, uh, like just literally designing the character on top of this vinyl toy.